Some of you may remember a couple of years ago I made this mini arcade using stuff I already had. I already had extra game controllers. I used scrap wood that was just laying around in my garage and an old tablet that I primarily used for reading comics before bed. It's great. It works. I plug it in. There's one issue though. These on-screen controls. I'm running RetroArch and by default on Android you have these on-screen controls. Now I can easily minimize it by clicking that but I still have that little button down in the corner. I can also go into the menu, then click on settings. I can go down to where it says on-screen display, on-screen display, and I can turn that off. And now, if I go back into a game, you can see that's gone and the controls are all gone. Except next time I start RetroArch, those controls are going to be back on the screen. And this is by design. Think about it, this is RetroArch for Android. So people are going to be running it on their phones or tablets and not normally have keyboards and controllers. If you get rid of the on-screen displays, you can't get into the menus and you can't control the game. So they set it up that, yeah, you can turn it off, but when you restart, they're going to come back by default. Thing is, most of the time that's not a problem. With my little arcade, yeah, I can just hit that little triangle in the corner and hide it, not a big deal. But if I wanted to make a mini arcade like this, and have it be primarily a game console, an arcade for people to play, I don't want the on-screen controls at all. So how can I permanently remove them? So as you can see again, we have a game running here and you have the on-screen controls. You can always minimize them, which is a great option. But again, if you're making a standalone arcade that you want to load a game at start and just use the joystick and you don't want anything on the screen, that's what we're going to work on today. We need to edit a text file on the phone. So you can install a text editor on the phone. You can open up a terminal on the phone. You can SSH in the phone if you have that set up. I'm just going to use ADB from my desktop. With my phone connected, I'm going to ADB shell. Of course, you have to have develop mode enabled for, to do this. So now I am logged into my phone and I'm going to go to my SD card, which is not an SD card. It's your internal storage. It's just labeled as SD card on Android devices. Inside this directory, you'll have you know, all your files and there's a directory called Android. If you move into that, there's some more directories. We're going to move into the one called data. And in here, it will have a list of certain applications. This is a place for applications to store certain types of information and configurations. Unlike other places on the device, users can modify this information, which is what we're going to do. So you're going to find one that has the word RetroArch in it. Depending on where you installed RetroArch from and your device, it may be named something different. Just find the directory that has RetroArch in the name and move into it. Inside this directory, there's a directory called Files. We'll move into that. And inside this, there's a few files. We are going to edit the one called retroarch.config. Again, you can edit this right on the phone with a text editor in the terminal on the phone. I'm going to use Vim since I have that installed, but whatever text editor you choose, you can always pull it off the phone, edit it, and push it back to the phone if you need to. So here we go. And the second option down is input overlay enabled. We are simply going to change this to false, from true to false. Now. We will go back to our emulator here. The overlay is still there. We need to close out of RetroArch. So we will swipe that away, click on the icon again. When it starts back up, I will load content. I will go into my directory here of download, choose the game, load the archive. And now we have the game running without any overlays on the screen. So again, in most cases, you're probably not going to want to do this unless you are making a device such as this, where you can set it up to load a game directly when it boots, and it goes into it, and you already have a joystick set up for the game, and it's kind of a standalone thing. It was hard finding information on this. Everyone always suggests going into the settings and changing it there, but again, that doesn't save it. You have to go and edit that config file. Also, you might want to look around in that file and see what other settings you can modify that make permanent changes to the emulators. Usually before you edit a text file, a configuration file like that, you want to make a backup of it in case you screw something up. You can always copy back the original. But in a case like this, I'm pretty sure that if you mess it up, you could just delete it and RetroArch will recreate it next time you start RetroArch. So not a big deal there unless you've made a lot of changes and you want to make sure not to lose those. Filmsbychris.com, that's my website. Please visit it. I also have a Patreon page. Thanks for watching. As always, I hope that you have a great day.